Cheers. Hello everybody, welcome back to another Gregorius Maths video. Today we're going to be looking at Hilbert spaces. And we're just going to be looking at one motivating example and some basic definitions. Okay? So, um, right, let's look at an example. Namely, Euclidean space. Um, or R3. Okay, we're going to look at, we're going to go to our boy R3. So just real three-dimensional space. We are in R3. Okay? Well, okay, okay. I don't want comments saying, oh, we're in a four-dimensional topological manifold, blah, 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 whatever you want to say. No, we're in R3, okay? We're in R3. <laughs> so, anyway. If we have R3 and, uh, okay, the vector space, R3 is a vector space. But it's actually more than that. Okay, so we have vectors which will look like this, with three components. Okay, but we but we can define the notion of a dot product. Okay, and the dot product is defined as x, y, z. Dot product, um, sigma, sigma, phi. I don't know why I used. Greek letters, but I don't know, is equal to x sigma plus y sigma plus z phi, okay? Now this dot product is actually called an inner product because it satisfies three axioms. Number one is that x dotted with y is equal to y dotted with x, okay? Number two is that x dotted with x is always going to be greater than or equal to zero, where x dotted with x is equal to zero if and only if x equals zero. Now, number three is that, um, oh yeah, number three is that, I forgot what it's called, but basically, if we're given a x1 plus b x2 dotted with y, that's equal to a x1 dot y plus b x2 dot y. Okay? Now, this is these are the three axioms for... Um, something to be an inner product and a space defined with this extra structure of an inner product is called an inner product space And actually we can go further. We can define something called the norm of X now the norm of X is denoted like this and It satisfies that X dotted with Y is equal to the norm of x times the norm of y times cosine of theta, where theta is the angle made by the two vectors x, y. So if you have x and y, these two vectors, theta is this angle made here. Right, so, so this, for, well, I, I mean, I'm getting a little bit off topic, off topic here, but if we have two orthogonal vectors, then their dot product is going to be zero because cosine of a right angle is just zero. All right, anyway, back to business. Yeah, so we have the norm of x, which we can define like this. Of course, we have a notion of distance and so on, so on, so on. But let's generalize this idea. Okay, so any finite dimensional um, in a product space, okay, is actually going to be a Hilbert space. All right, so let's use this motivational example. I hope you're motivated by this example, okay, to define a Hilbert space. The hell is a Hilbert space? Okay, definition. 
Oh, please tell me I get this right. Come on, hey, okay. A hill but space is a vector space V, okay? Equipped with an additional structure. Oh, sorry, a vector space V over the complex numbers or the real numbers doesn't actually matter, okay? S with diff equipped with this inner product notion, this additional structure, sorry, the inner product, which is some input, comma, some other input, that's how I'm going to denote it, such that, and the axioms are going to look very, very similar to what we just saw. Okay, so the first one is slightly different because we're also dealing with C now. So X um, in a product Y is equal, to, is equal to Y in a product X conjugate. Sorry, let me just draw that nice. Conjugate. Okay, because we're dealing with C. Okay, so it's symmetric under conjugation. Now, number two is that oh yeah um a x1 plus b x2 so you know x2 in a product y is equal to a x1 product y plus b x2 in a product y and number three is exactly the same as our Euclidean space R3 example, okay? Now, it says that x in a product x is greater than or equal to zero where x in a product with itself is equal to zero if and only if x equals zero. All right, these are the axioms. Now, there are some more definitions, okay? For example, the norm of x, to let's denote it like this. The norm of x is equal to the square root of x in a product with itself, okay? So if we take a look at our Euclidean space, R3, well, the norm of x is just going to be the absolute value or the magnitude of some vector x because we know that the square root of x squared is the absolute value of x which is the magnitude of x so the norm of x is just the magnitude of x in r3 but in general this is how it's defined now we can actually define a distance function a distance metric whatever you want to call it d of x y is equal to the square root of x minus y in a product x minus y. All right. Um, okay, and this satisfies the triangle inequality. Okay, so d of x z is less than or equal to d of x y plus d of y z. Okay. So, okay, so, the, one of the applications of this in quantum mechanics is that um, when it was being mathematically developed, like rigorously, um, the possible states or the pure states of a quantum mechanical system are represented by unit vectors in a complex separable Hilbert space, okay? And in the next video, we're gonna be looking at bra -ket notation, or ket vectors or whatever, and you'll see why I introduced the notion of a Hilbert space first. Goodbye.